Hey everyone, this is Elias from RevMatch Media, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 2023 Ford Escape Platinum All-Wheel Drive. Now, let's see if this can escape your typical CV cookie cutter segment. Well, let's go ahead and get started. We can start in the front and we can see this thing has LEDs everywhere. <laughs> so first of all, the color, this white color isn't a very typical white. It is a very sparkly white. There is so much shine to this. Now my personal car, my wife's personal car is a white vehicle. We've had them parked next to each other and this thing was shining like crazy. I was surprised at how much this paint shine compared to just a standard, just a gloss white color. So yeah, I was kind of jealous of this one. <laughs> so very simple thing, but it really makes it stand out. So the other thing is the lighting with this. So we do have the LED headlights and these things were incredible, really tiny, but man, they, they lit up the road with no issues. The other thing, we have this LED light bar up here, which looks really nice. We have, I guess you could call it like a unibrow. It's a cool little design. I do love that. Uh, it's, don't expect super light output. It's just more like an accent design more than anything, but I really think it sets it apart and gives it that little bit of flair that some of these CUVs need in this kind of, eh, like I said, cookie cutter segment. But we also have the LED fog lights in the front, which were really great as well, you know, to light up the road. We do have this black grill. Uh, it does have kind of a cool uh, shape to it. Uh, kind of almost looks like fish scales in a sense, like when you're kind of looking at it from, from this angle. Uh, we do have the front facing camera. This does have a 360 degree uh, camera system on it. It's been great. You don't really need it for something like this, but it's nice to have it uh, to make sure you're able to squeeze into the tiniest of spots uh, with this. We do have an opening down here where we have all the our radar stuff for your uh, adaptive cruise control and safety features, things like that. Uh, down here, we have this little lip uh, as well. Now, the one thing I was telling my, my, my close friend that he did have one of the earlier generation escapes was his seemed a little bit taller, you know, a little bit more off-roadish rugged. And this just, this has been a little bit more civilized in that sense. And then I remembered, oh yeah, we have the Bronco Sport to kind of take on that segment of what the escape kind of was. So yeah, we kind of, we kind of got this more civilized version compared to the other uh, generations, but we do have that Bronco Sport, which is a lot of fun. But overall though, I love this front end. No issues with really anything. Everything just looks great. And yeah, that white just sparkles so much. So let's go ahead and see what we have under this hood. We get under the hood and 2.0 liter EcoBoost inline four cylinder turbocharged engine. It is cranking out 250 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque. It is connected to the eight speed auto and then to the all wheel drive system. Now, a couple of things with this, the power, it is very peppy. I do love the power this thing has. It's a pretty impressive of how much it can, it can really put down. The weak point to this though, that transmission, that transmission in the sense of performance, performance, uh, and I'm talking about, you know, uh, actually everyday driving, I would say, because when you're wanting to, you know, switch lanes and you kind of have to speed up a little bit, there is a delay in downshifts, a significant delay, which we'll test out uh, when we go for the drive. I was kind of, in, uh, kind of scared and, and it was a shock when I really, you know, hammered it down to to be able to switch lanes and i didn't get the response that i was expecting so just be aware that yeah you're gonna have to kind of adjust your your i guess your driving style your habit when you go to need when you need this to downship so that's really the only thing the all-wheel drive system it's so good from a stop typically you know, with these CUVs, all-wheel, you know, all-wheel drive systems are just kind of an afterthought. 
I, I want to say because they're so front wheel drive heavy so or, or so front wheel drive bias where you're literally flooring it and front wheels are spinning and then after a while that your front wheel has been spinning it transfers the power to the rear not with this though I, I couldn't get any wheel spin. I turned traction control off and it was just sending the power to the back. Um, it was really, really impressive. And, and again, some other vehicles I've had traction control on and it's still spinning the front wheels and then it decides to, to send the power to the back and cut the power to gain the traction again. But now with this, this has plenty of power but it puts it down really well. So it's not that, oh, it's underpowered because I've had lesser powered engines and front wheels are just spinning to hell. <laughs> so that was impressive. The sound, yeah, it's pretty bad. It's, it's, it's not a very like, whoa, this thing rumbles or this thing has a unique sound. Um, no, it just sounds not that good. Um, but other than that though, it's, Everything is so good about this, um, except again, those downshifts of the transmission. If you're upshifting, no problem. It's really quick. It's responsive what you need it to be. Downshifts, especially from super higher gears, expect a delay. Well, let's go ahead and see what we have in those wheels and tires. We get down to the wheel and tire package and we have this 19 inch wheel and it is wrapped in the 255-55 Bridgestone Ecopia tire. Now, a couple of things with this. The wheel design, I, I don't know, something is, is lacking. I guess it's just the kind of spinning aspect of it, of the blades, so to speak. I guess if they were a little bit more aggressive, would have been nice. But when you're at a Platinum, which is basically the highest model uh, of this, I don't know, these wheel kind of look a little bland. Uh, now they are a little bit dirty, um, but you know, they're, we have kind of the, the machine face uh, with the color insert as well. It's a little bit of a darker gray. Maybe if there were like super black, dark, like dark black or a, a darker gun metal uh, would have been nice. But yeah, I just, thank God for the aftermarket is what I'll say for the wheels. The tires weren't bad. The tires were really good. They were nice and quiet. The grip was there. Um, the brakes were incredible. They really got this little guy stopped. Uh, the suspension was nice. The suspension was really rewarding. Now, the wheels are a little bit dirtier. I didn't take it on unpaid road. My wife did uh, because she, what, her GPS said, hey, just take this road. And she goes, okay. And she thought it was unpaved. She said it was really fun. Uh, so she was really surprised at how good the suspension handled. It's basically this pavement we have down here um, at, you know, 35 to about 40 miles an hour. So she was really impressed by that. So I'll take her for her word for it when she's really critical of how suspension behave. But yeah, this has been a really good setup. Oh, and the power distribution have been has been pretty good to get the power down on all the four wheels with this having the all wheel drive system. Um, yeah, I would only change really the wheel itself. Well, let's go ahead and see what we have on the side. We get to the side and we can see for the Ford Escape, this is unfortunately kind of the more mundane cookie cutter side of CVs. There's not much that's exciting on the side profile. I think if we had better wheels, it would just kind of set everything off a little bit more. Um, but yeah, again, those 19 inch wheels, even though, yeah, they're 19 inch wheels, they're pretty on, they're on the big side. The design isn't quite there, at least for me. Uh, but we do have the headlights that kind of peek over significantly actually from the side profile. We do have this kind of protective uh, plastic kind of lip to it and that follows at the bottom to get to the back and then just follows back there as well. Uh, we do have the camera system under here uh, on the mirror. We do have chrome trimming on this, have the uh, top roof rails that's pretty much it as far as, oh yeah, the white. The white is, again, I wish I can capture it on camera, but it's really, really shiny and really, really, you know, just really sparkly. So key fob is in my pocket and I'm gonna go ahead and reach in and it unlocks and I can go ahead and get this guy open. I go ahead and close this off. I can lock there. 
I can also unlock with the pad that is here. I love the fact that this is part of the door and it's not kind of like an other Fords where it's like really sticking out. So I do love that it's kind of blended in to the point that I, had, I didn't even see it till I opened up the door and it lights up. Now I go to reach to the back and yeah, there's no sensor in the back. So you do have to kind of grab this and then open the back door, which is pretty big. It's a good, good amount of size to, to get back in there. We go ahead and close that off and lock it. And now let's go ahead and head to the back and see what we have back there. We get to the back and we can see, yeah, <laughs> this is dirty from my wife's unpaved adventure, um, but it is a pretty good design. There are some really cool design elements to this, so it's not as bland as the side profile. We do have some fun things here. So get started at the top. We do have this little spoiler that sticks out. I love the, it's such a subtle thing, but I love the color combination we have. So what I mean by that is it, it's in, in the body color, and then we have these black accents here, which really frames this. It, it makes the spoiler stick out a little bit more. We have the brake light, third brake light there. The rear window or the rear glass, no issues with looking out of it. We do have the wiper there to make sure it's clean, which I should definitely use. And we have the taillights. I do love the taillights. We have kind of this bulging uh, design to it. It's like a, it's a weird, like in, in a good way, kind of smooth, but angular design to it. So I do love the shaping we have there. Big escape badge, big platinum badge, small all wheel drive badge we have there. We do have this plastic, um, like the black uh, textured bumper in the back here. We do have this kind of lower lip and we have the dual exhaust. Now, the <laughs> the exhaust, the actual pipe is actually sticking out just slightly more than the tip is here. And we have two of them. So yeah, I guess you guys get the pass because they're real exhausts, but maybe clean that up a little bit more and have it not show the real one as opposed to just the tip. But yeah, we have that there. We have the backup camera, again, with this having the 360 degree system. It's really good to make sure you're able to squeeze this guy in the tiniest of spots. So I'll go ahead and actually with the key fob, you have the key fob, you also have the option here, but I'll go ahead and activate it with the key fob and we get this guy open and we have a good amount of space. I was surprised at how big, you know, we have space and we do have the little uh like this panel here that we can put at a lower step to give us a little bit more depth we do have a spare back here which is a nice touch um to have especially in a vehicle like this uh and we have the um all-wheel drive system which again surprised that we have that there because a lot of times with a vehicle that has all-wheel drive the differential kind of takes up that spot and you get a a canister of uh, fix a flat kind of situation. But yeah, surprised with this. And again, we have the button up here. Uh, this doesn't, I forgot one thing, it doesn't have the cover. It didn't come with the cover, but I know it does have a cover. We do have the hookups here and on here as well uh, to make sure no one can take a look at what is inside of your trunk area. So I'll go ahead and I'll just press this button, get to close. So you're set with that. So I'll go ahead and uh, also with the key fob, we do have the remote start, which is so necessary when the weather is about to hit about 109 today. So press the lock and press twice and we got it going. It's a fairly loud little 2.0 liter. It doesn't sound like wow, but it's got a little bit of a, of a volume to it. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and hop in and go for a ride because it's getting hot. We get inside of the Escape and there's some really nice things and then some things that really stand out in maybe not the best way, but let's get started. We get started on the door and as far as ergonomics, it's really nice. We have uh, your, your ability to have your arm at the top. It is a little bit thicker on the top, which is nice. I love it because then again, I can rest my arm and my arm isn't sliding off the top. Same thing with the bottom. Uh, the armrest is plentiful 
uh, to rest your arm there and the controls are easy to get to. We have your seat, memory, three options, which is pretty surprising for really this segment. Usually you see one or two if, <laughs> if that, but we do have three with this. So definitely they're seeing it, I guess, as more as a family, you know, mom, dad, kid situation that is going to be driving this. So yeah, that was nice to see. What I don't like about this is the finishes. So the, the top of this, it is a little bit on the more, I guess, rugged side, you could say, uh, but it feels a little cheap. Uh, th but there are other things that feel really nice, like this uh, brushed aluminum. Yeah, this brushed aluminum, aluminum feels uh, aluminum feels really nice. I love the, the, the feel to it. Um, but yeah, the top, it's not 100%. And that kind of leads me to the dashboard. So the dashboard has that same material. It's like a spongy uh, plastic feel and it looks cheap yeah i hate to say it but it, it does look a little bit on the cheaper side of things but let's get to the seats and the seats are pretty good there's a couple of things about this though uh they are comfortable i i do love that they are comfortable no no issues with with kind of sitting on them and you know getting getting your little comfortable spot so no issues there the design isn't bad uh with this so it, it does add a little bit more to just having a a plain old seat kind of thing what i don't like is i'm sitting extremely high on this like <laughs> like i can put my my foot flat on the floor and my knee is almost straight yeah typically i like sitting really low and this is the lowest seat so if you're tall uh, i mean you still have a good amount of space but yeah you may want to <laughs> if you're a little bit on the taller side than my 5.7, uh, you may want to consider test getting in it before you decide to buy it. Um, but yeah, it, it was a little bit high and I kind of feel like I'm sitting a little too high, really. Because uh, again, I like to sit a little bit lower and, and I'll tell you why another component of this is kind of weird that we're sitting so high. But other than that though, it's comfortable. We have the heated option. It doesn't have a vented option. So I can't tell you how good the heated option is because right now it's 91 degrees and it's barely not even, it's not even nine o'clock. So yeah, we, we have that. So no complaints as far as ergonomics with the seat itself. Then we get over to the steering wheel and the steering wheel is nice. So we do have this leather wrapped wheel. It does have gray stitching. Would have been nice to have a different color or something else, but it is nice. Uh, we do also have the the leather itself is a little bit on the squishy side and it's been feeling really really amazing i've loved how like squishy <laughs> this is it's so soft too and then we go over to the left side and we have your cruise control settings at the top half and at the bottom half we have your volume controls for your infotainment system and then on the right hand side we're gonna have your menu controls for the uh, gauge cluster and at the bottom we have the next track uh, buttons for your infotainment system i've been loving this uh, we had this in the f450 uh, just obviously this is a smaller size i i don't know i'm starting to like usually i like the back buttons for things but i'm starting to like these front ones here uh, that are that are you know just kind of not in the way but very useful positioning down here so yeah loving that ford and uh, again just the wheel itself was uh, is a nice feel to it then we get over to the gauge cluster and the gauge cluster is nice so it's a full digital display and we do have the blue look to it because it's dependent on the drive mode that you're in right now we're normal so that's the normal color it's that blue uh ford blue that you get and it's good i mean as far as the inf information that you get power distribution we have calm screen which means it just minimizes it to the bare minimum of what you need your range and your uh, speedometer then we also have the trip information we have fuel economy so it shows you kind of like your active uh, fuel mpgs and we have the tire pressure and i've been in tire pressure this whole time because yeah we unfortunately had a, a box of nails fall on a road that we uh, drive and we want to make sure that there aren't any stragglers and we catch one and we want to make sure that we are able to monitor that so many times it's such a small detail that we're having to always go into different menus to just have that important uh information up especially if like you're going on a really 
a long road trip. So yeah, okay, end rant. And let's go to the other thing. And that is above the gauge cluster, we have a heads up display. And that heads up display is kind of weird because you sit so high up and the information is so down low that, and again, I am five foot seven. So if you guys are taller, it's gonna be even less. And to position the, the projection of it, you're gonna really have to be low, but yeah, that's that's the only thing, and it is with a screen, so you do have to have that little screen that kind of pops up, and when you do when you don't want it, you can just hide it away, which is nice to have because sometimes that screen I don't know it can be a little obstructive uh, with that, and and again you're having to really look down to the point where you're just inches away, literally from just looking at your speedometer. So if it were able to have been projected a little bit higher or even better move the seat down move the seat down so that i can have the the actual display showing up a little bit higher on that that would have been a better thing to do then we come over to the infotainment screen and the infotainment screen is nice and big i love the look to this i love the uh the design the layout of it we have the Apple wireless CarPlay. Yes, we have wireless Apple CarPlay on this. So we see my music is playing there and we have our fuel economy here on the right side. We have it split and we have things like, obviously you can have your, your music there. So if you wanna have your music and you wanna have your maps here to show where you're gonna go ahead and where you're gonna be driving essentially, you have that option there. Um, but you can also put your navigation there and you can have your phone information there, trip information, and your fuel economy, which is basically where I've had everything in. So I do love that. I've been, basically, this has been my setup for majority of the time. Now we come a little bit lower and we have the AC controls or your uh, climate controls down here. It is on the screen. Yes, um, I don't know how I feel about this uh, because I don't know, it, it, the screen is a little bit on the delayed response. So I am having to like push it and then I'm waiting for it. Yeah, there you go. There was, that was the delay I was talking to you guys about where I press it, wait a while and then you get it to the point where I was doing the whole, okay, why isn't it coming up? And I'm pressing and it was turning it on and then off. Yeah, I was, I was battling that. So I just needed to be a little bit more patient with it to, to get it to show me the information that I wanted. But yeah, other than that, and I think that's why I would, I think I would prefer hard buttons or Ford firmware update probably just improve on that and, and fix that basically. Then we come down to the buttons down here and this has been what's been tripping me up a lot. And that is the start stop for the engine to turn it on and off. It's here, it's not like where you normally would traditionally see near the steering column uh, on there because of the design of how this dashboard kind of curves in there. And it's been a little, it's different. It's not bad, it's just different. And it's been frustrating me because again, I always look for here, but it's down here and I keep forgetting it's down there. And then we have your other controls uh, like your drive, you know, traction control settings. Um, uh, on here we have your parking assist we have your auto on off ac your defrost we have your drive modes uh, and we have your cameras yes we have your cameras <laughs> there we go so we have the cameras and they're pretty good I, I was surprised at how good they are and you guys will see we do have the dual uh, options there the dual displays so we can go ahead and just make the three point stop and make sure that we are within the lines of the road. And it's been really easy. I've been loving that little camera button with no issue, with no issues to just bring it up. And again, we, we can change the different camera modes that you have for this. Yeah, so it hasn't been too bad. Then, oh, actually one thing I dislike about, the, about this is to kind of get out of things, it's a pain. <laughs> it, it, I don't know, like I'm having to bring up the AC controls. Oh yeah, just push the button to turn it off. 
I just wish, yeah, and then there's my AC controls. That's the only thing is the home button. I wish that would always stay there so that you can always go back to where that's supposed to be. Then we come down to this little area here. This does have a wireless charger. It does work nicely. Um, I do have mine connected right now just to make sure that I have a good, stronger, faster charge um, to the USB-A or the USB-C connection that this has with a 12 volt adapter on the side. And we have a little cubby area right in there as well. We come back a little bit more and we have the uh, rotary shifter. I'm not a big fan of this one um, because uh, we'll get to that in the performance side of things but yeah we have the obviously park reverse neutral drive and uh the l so we don't have the option of shifting or limiting or changing the the gears and like i said we'll get to that in a little bit then we have the the handbrake the electronic parking handbrake <laughs> it's a little switch and then we have the park hold on the right hand side we do have a cup holders they are not big cup friendly so they are a little bit on the smaller side so just be aware of that if you have bigger cups um, or bigger like bottles uh, that you're not going to be able to fit them in there we have a little cubby area for your key really nice little area where you can have it there and it's set we get to the armrest and the armrest is nice and comfortable. The stitching is a little bit on the bigger side, so just kind of be aware that uh, if you're constantly moving, it is going to be kind of scratching you. Um, but once you get in the flat area and you no longer can share with your passenger, <laughs> uh, it's gonna be nice and comfortable so you won't have any issues there. Then you go ahead and you open it up and it's a fairly good amount of, of size. So I would say my tissue box that I usually use would definitely fit in here with no with no problem uh, and you're set there then we get to the back and the back is nice and comfortable no issues there as far as uh, the space my kiddo has been loving it the only thing is it's been a little bit difficult for him to buckle in his seatbelt because his his child C or booster C is a little bit on the wider side and each kind of seat itself isn't really that wide so just be aware of that where you're gonna have to kind of help them out but the good thing is it's not a big SUV that I'm having to really reach over I can just kind of reach back pop it in for him and he's good to go then we get to the cargo area and like we saw the cargo area has a good amount of space we do have that little um, platform that we can lower as well uh, but yeah no issues with storage it's great if you're going on a big grocery shop uh, you're going to be able to fit your stuff in there with no problem and you know get put this put this little suv to use now let's talk performance we're dealing with the 2.0 liter ecoboost inline four cylinder and it is cranking out 250 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque it is connected to the eight speed auto and then to the all-wheel drive system now, a couple of things with this. We're gonna, in order to switch up your drive mode, I wish it were a button that would just switch the drive mode, but you're having to push the drive mode button and then choose your mode. So we'll go ahead and choose Sport on there. And I do love the animations. That is awesome. I do love the way that it just has like a very, it, it looks like the, the, it looks like the internals of a turbo. So it's, well, it, the fins of a turbo so we have that we do have the eco which is going to give you like uh you know the little greenery uh we have the slippery which is going to give you the uh kind of the rainfall there and then normal is just going to give you kind of the cityscape there so we'll switch it over to sport um i wish we had shifters in this that was the big thing i didn't like about this rotary shifter i wish we could shift what gear we were in because this is pretty peppy at that horsepower and torque number and it's been impressive to get this guy going um but there's a little bit kind of an issue with that transmission well i'll let you know what i'm talking about so we'll kind of load it up and go yeah it's not bad and the brakes are pretty good the the suspension i was surprised and the power distribution is pretty good you can definitely hear a lot of air i don't know if it's pumped in because it wasn't in there earlier before uh but or that's just the engine you know generating the the air from the twin scroll turbo so 
basically it's easier to get get this thing on boost and it feels like it too so no issues with that and yeah like i said the power distribution has been pretty good the sound again isn't the best it's, it's not going to be something that you're like wow this sounds incredible now this is what i mean let me switch back to normal and again i have to hit the home button to go back to where i want to go and then kind of back to my car play so this is what i mean where i don't I'm not a big fan of this transmission, so we'll just kind of gain a little bit of speed till it shifts right there. And on three, I'm gonna go ahead and floor it. One, two, three, go. That is, a, I think it's too much of a delay in the downshift. And because of that, I've had to, you know, when I wanna go ahead and switch lanes, you kind of have to give it a little bit more and it's been a little scary because there's been that small delay with getting that power down. And now I have to preemptively kind of floor it and then know to expect the downshift to happen. And that wasn't as bad of as, as I experienced it on other moments because I've gone ahead and, you know, the gear wasn't as as high or, or higher gears than you normally would when you're cruising at higher speeds. So. Yeah, let's go ahead and we'll switch it back to, uh, again, we have to push this, go to sport, and then, so we here, we're in sport, load it up a little bit, and away we go. And like I said, the power distribution isn't bad as far as like getting, you know, it's not very front wheel drive bias, or at least it doesn't feel like that, and it didn't wait like other, you know, all wheel drive, cuvs where the front wheels are spinning for a while and then it's like oh yeah i can send power to the rear now with this i feel like it's i guess i'm it's because i'm in sport mode let's that's actually that brings up a good point let's go to normal mode and see if we launch it if the front wheel drive will spin the front wheels will spin before the rears do no no and i can see it here as well where it is just you know sending the power to the rear and not again waiting for that front to break traction so good on you Ford. that was that's pretty impressive because a lot of times again you're having to wait for things to go bad <laughs> in the sense of front slippage um for it to really make use of the rear wheels um but this is pretty good but again i would have liked to have those paddle shifters at least or a shifter on the uh or, or a traditional shifter because of that where i can go ahead and just downshift and choose the uh, gear i want it to stay in to get boost so with this it's having to you know with these turns it's having to upshift when i let off and then it's downshifting when i get back on it i would have liked to just held the the gear there and go and I know <laughs> I'm asking uh, performance things from a vehicle like this, which it's impressive that it has this performance, but it's not really needed. And we'll switch back to normal mode. And yeah, as far as this, it's been nice. It's been nice. It has been impressive with that power. The transmission again is really its weak point of of speed and responsiveness when you are in you know in cruising speed so like how we are now and go go so the the difference between my goals was the time it took for it to go from the highest eighth gear that it was in to i don't know what gear because we don't have that information and i don't have a shifter to tell me <laughs> but other than that though the ride has been comfortable the uh steering wheel has been has given me the feedback that i need power is good transmission just is a little bit on the slower side space has been fine comfort everything it's been a pretty impressive cuv again i wish some materials were a little bit different to give me a more um I don't know luxury feel to it but i get it i get it but then we have other cvs like mazda where and the cx30 where they are giving you those beautiful 
really high-end uh, finishes to it. But yeah, and then this at the price tag, I believe it's about forty thousand. How this one is equipped? Yeah, it's a little little hard to kind of swallow and not go for a different option or go for a different model or with an even Ford or even a different brand. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the 2023 Ford Escape Platinum. And remember, find the right gear. See ya.